Hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. Uh, my name is Don Bowen and I have my buddy right here, Emery. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you guys about how to understand how to control someone so that you know how to not be controlled. So, but right now, let's go ahead and go to our sponsors. All right, hey guys, this week's video is brought to you by XS Sights, the fastest sights in any light. Now, if you run low power variable optics, you know you can't use regular flip up backup iron sights. You've got to run 45 degree offsets. Right now, on my, this is my, uh, my 12 and a half inch 308. I'm running the XD12, it's 45 degree offset and it's got the big bright orange dot with tritium insert that I'm used to from all my other guns, my pistols and everything. All right, now if you're running a red dot or a EOTech, something like that, and you want regular flip ups, uh, this flip up iron sight right here, it's got the tritium uh, right on the front of it. So, I mean, literally you can see your backups now you can see in the dark. Totally badass, guys. Uh, American made, Texas proud, and 2A strong. XS Sites. Check it out at XSSites.com. All right, well, we're back. So right now, I just want to kind of break down with, uh, with my buddy Emery, how you can, uh, what we're trying to look for in a, in a person when we are either standing up on the ground, maybe in a confined space against a wall, whatever it is. So Emery, just do me a favor. Let's go ahead and just lay down. We're going to go ahead and chop up Emery like a, like a deer. Just lay down just like that. Perfect. So Emery is in a perfect position when we were talking about um, like, like in, the, in, in the defense. He's got his heels and his, uh, and his toes on the ground, his knees are bent, and this is what he should be trying to do. And his elbows are tucked in. We have this strength triangle from our elbows to our head right here so that we can protect and we have our frames. <clears throat> For me, what I'm trying to do is if I'm the attacker, I gotta get past his legs, okay? Once I get past his legs, anywhere in between, check this out right here. Anywhere in between from his knees all the way up into the armpit and the elbow. If I can control any of these points right here, then I basically can control this person. Okay? What Emery has to understand, or you need to be understanding, is you don't want me inside this space. So, if anything, what I like to call is, from uh, the, the forearms, I like to call it the frame. And then what I like to call with the shin area, because you need to try to get those. those are, these are your control, uh, your defense points. So the shin area, we'll call that the shield. So if I'm trying to get inside this space right here because I want to try to control Emery, you know, he wants to try to get that frame into action and he wants to try to get that shin, uh, that shield into action. Okay? And this is perfect for, uh, this is perfect for, for him, you know, as far as trying to be on the defense side. So once we understand this, then we can understand, hey, how do we get out of this or how do we control this person? So once again, right inside here, this is my buffet. I want to try to take, you know, I want to try to control this person. I can work from here. I can get on top of the person, controlling their hips. You know, if I am in this position right here and I pass the knees, I got to make sure if anything, honestly, I need to try to have some kind of, kind of connection to his, to his uh, hip. By me having some kind of connection to his hip, I can control his hip. He wants to try to get his hip away, kind of move your hip out a little bit, exactly. He needs to try to move his hip out so that he can be able to uh, bring his knee up and go into a defensive posture. So, but once I'm able to control that hip, then it's gonna be a little bit harder for him to be able to uh, move his hip, which, which he needs. So from here, now if anything, I'm trying to, I can, you know, I'm already inside his armpit right here, okay? so. If anything, if he gets this frame back in, well then he's back into defense mode. So let's stand up real quick, Emery. <clears throat> if, if I were to try to kick him or anything like that, and I would, I would, I'm not gonna wanna just you know, kick him right here you know, in his shin. Shin the shin's not gonna feel too good, okay? Or, or maybe, you, know, you got tougher shins, you might be able to get away with that. But my target areas are above the knee, right around here and all right into this armpit area, okay? So if I were to kick, boom, I'm trying to target that, it's not gonna feel too good, or maybe I can try to knee, you know, if trying to take a knee from there, it's not gonna feel good at all. Um, and then here's the other thing too, if I'm gonna kick him in the ribs, he's not gonna like that as, uh, he's not gonna like that as well. He wants to try to bring that shield up as I, 
as I go for my kick or, you know, whatever it is. And then if I'm trying to kick him right here in the ribs, he's going to try to get that frame in the action, you know, or basically bring him all up so that he is trying to protect all this area. So remember, we're trying to protect all of these sensitive areas so that we can be able to survive. <clears throat> if I'm trying to attack him, those are the areas that I'm trying to, knock, uh, I'm trying to take care of him. You know, try to, try to knock him out or try to hurt him, uh, you know, because those are all sensitive areas. Even inside right here, inside of, his, inside of uh, the, the inside thigh, he's not going to like that too much. Taking a kick there, taking a knee there, you know, and then, of course, once again, all of this right here. Even liver punches, you know. Wild part about the liver punch is you can, if, if you hit somebody in that liver, you know, and you hit them right, you're gonna, you're more likely you're gonna have like a delayed reaction. And it's one of those things where, it's, it's funny, you want to fight on, but you're gonna go down. So you wanna try to protect that liver, okay? So if you know how to hit somebody, that, that's probably the best target area that I would like to try to hit someone, you know, to, to try to control that person. Anyways, come on over here real quick, Emery. All right, cool. So Emery's in a good defensive posture. Remember what I was talking about, my target areas are above the knee, and into the armpit area. Now, stay right there, Emery, don't move. Here's another thing we have to take into consideration. If I split Emery right half his body right here, so we're gonna go from the, basically from the hip, you know, we're trying to control the hip, right? So if we're standing up, I'm trying to, here's my center line, okay? So basically from his chin all the way down to his groin area. So that's another type of uh, control point that I want to be able to, um, to understand. So if I was able to push his elbow over here, now pretty much I'm, a, I'm, I'm exposing his side right here. And not only that, I have an opportunity to be able to go to his back. Come a little bit for, uh, closer. Good. Another thing to, uh, to take into consideration is look at his heels. If we drew an imaginary line from his heel to heel, that's called a line of leverage. So just stay right there, don't move. If I step on that line of leverage, right now our hips are squared, you know, and we're basically in a, in a perfect, you know, mutual fight, right? You know, so, all right, cool. But if I am able to step and understand, I'm gonna step on that line of leverage. Once I step over here, I'm already halfway to his back. So he naturally is gonna want to try to score back up, or he should, okay? So once we have some of those um, understanding, it's gonna really help us to be able to uh, try to control the person or not let that person control us. So stepping on that line of leverage, he's going to want to try to score up. Exactly. Or if I can try to drive his elbow, I'm already halfway to his back and now I can go ahead and start to, to try to take him down. Another thing to take into consideration, which is very, very important, is basically is breaking down that person's posture. So if I can basically control his head, this is good for me. Okay, we're talking about like judo or wrestling or anything like that. We're just, you know, just trying to control that person. If I can break their balance, I can control that person. So if we're talking about basically like, a, you know, just a bear hug, getting aside here for a bear hug, I want to try to be able to get, remember, getting the underhook. So if I'm getting the underhook, remember what I'm doing right here, I'm getting under the armpits and I want that. So maybe if we're talking about wrestling, I can get a belly to, the belly suplex, or maybe I can get to his back, belly the back suplex, but I'm already under his arms, which I feel better in control. So another thing too, so we have the, uh, the double unders or we have over under, right? So basically he has one arm in, he has one arm in right here, and I have one arm in, you know, and basically just trying to fight for, for, for double unders or anything like that. But talking about going back to the, uh, to the head control point, is for me, we call this like a tie clinch. I'm trying to drive my forearm into his collarbone and then trying to grab his little man button right here. So I wanna to try to be able to hold this right here just so that I can be able to control him. So if I can control him right here, this is, this is good for me, okay? But I also have to make sure, hey, being mindful of his, of, of his punches or, or his elbows or, or even his knees, okay? But for a tie, for a tie uh, Sorry. collar tie, yeah, you're good. I'm trying to drive my forearm into his uh, collarbone and trying to control this man bun. So right here, this is what I'm trying to achieve. So now I can effectively deliver strikes by controlling his head, pulling him to the left or to the right, pulling him to the left. And as I do that, as I'm pulling him to the left, I can be driving my left knee. If I pull him to the right, I can be driving my right knee. Um, but if you kind of, if you understand what am I trying to achieve, 
to control you know, your Emory or whoever, um, you just have to understand, hey, don't let them do that. So make sure that you've got good, good posture. Make sure that if anything, like we face off, depending on whatever it is, his posture right here, I want to make sure, you know, just because he's, 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 uh, he's a lot longer than I am, taller, okay? I got to make sure that I have a good sense of distance so that either I can effectively strike, but just know that he does have longer ranges. Go ahead and stick your arm out, yep. So he, he does have longer ranges than me, okay? So I have to take that into consideration. If anything, honestly, if I'm not trying to freaking skedaddle and get out of the way, whatever, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crash in. You know, I'm gonna just try to crash in and just get to him and then maybe try to go for a double leg, maybe try to go for a single leg, whatever, you know, or even a blast double driving into him and just taking him down, you know. But if I have to be able to get out of there, well then, by all means, I gotta make sure that I have the proper distance, you know, and then also not, I mean, I have to know what's around me. I gotta make sure I don't have a, like something down where I'm gonna freaking trip. Or, or some kind of a wall or just whatever, maybe a car. So I have to take all of those type of things uh, in, into consideration. So, but- Donnie, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. You're talking about head control? Yeah. Let's explain to people, maybe if they have uh, somebody controlling their head, what they can do. Yeah, so if somebody's trying to control your head, what you wanna do is you wanna try to make sure if anything, Try to keep your head up the best that you can because if he's pulling my head down, he can just go ahead and deliver a knee right to my face. I don't want that, okay? So if anything, let's kind of go over this, this, uh, this point. How do we get out of that? So from that tie clinch, you know, or maybe somebody's trying to pull my head down, check this out over here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand. Oops, I'm gonna take my hand. I'm gonna show you guys from this angle. I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna shoot it across to his opposite side shoulder, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do here that's my frame. And I'm just gonna drive that to open him up a little bit. And then I can take this hand and I can shoot it through so that now I'm back into a good control position. Now, this is more like a 50-50 because he does, he's basically mirroring me, but at least I have one arm in so that I'm able to kind of protect myself. A 50-50 is better than nothing, okay? Come like, let's get down on the ground real quick. Talk about this right here. For me, if I have control here, if we're talking about like jujitsu terms, side control, if I'm controlling him from the side, well, this is good for me, bad for him. Same thing if I'm all the way on top, full mount. Basically, this is bad for him, good for me. I'm controlling his hips. Now, I don't really wanna be on his hips because he can always buck, and this is not what I wanna do, okay? Especially if I'm trying to effectively strike him, he's bucking. It, it's, if he's bucking, then of, of course I'm not gonna be able to effectively strike. So if that's the case, what I wanna try to do is I wanna try to at least hook its legs. What we call is a, a grapevine. So from here, just relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shoot my legs. And all I'm doing is I'm shooting my legs underneath. I can, make, I can put my feet together and then I can try to hook his legs. From right here, instead of getting, all, instead of getting bucked all over the place, um, I, can, I can get into this position and just being mindful too, let's, let's, let's say I gotta know where his hands are at all times. I don't want his hands digging for, for a knife or, or any kind of like anything that, that can stab me or cut me or, or hurt me, whatever, okay? So either I can hook his legs, and the only reason why I would try to hook his legs to try to go into that grapevine is if I cannot get inside here into his elbows, okay? But if I can get there, then this is better for me. Try to buck, it's not gonna really do much. So if anything, I can do my hammer fists, I can do my palm strikes and everything else. This is perfect for me being high on the chest. So, but just understand, this is, this is what I'm trying to achieve. He doesn't want that, so what he, should he do? He should try to get me back on his hips. Walk your shoulders back, good. He should try to get me back on his hips and then he can go back to bucking and turning and whatever so that I can't effectively strike him, okay? Covering up. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, no, you're good, brother. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. So once we, we, once we have these, this, this understanding on the ground, standing up, we would be able to, I know that we would be able to survive a lot better, just making sure we understand squaring back up, center line, uh, the line of leverage, controlling the head, uh, and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys have any comments, please comment below. 
And uh, thank you guys very much. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.